Okay, let's uh, talk a little bit about California. So California just came out or is coming out with the uh, cross connect control policy handbook. Right now, uh, cross connect control is governed by Title 17 of the California Administrative Code. And what happened was it was Assembly Bill 1671, I think. Look it up, but uh, it was an Assembly Bill that they passed. They basically said the State Water Board can put together a handbook and that will be the law. So they passed the law once saying this is going to be the law and they made it easy to change that handbook, easier to change that handbook. They can't just make changes at random. They have to, you know, put out for comments to water disease across the state and whatnot, but, um, but it is easier to change. Um, so that could be good. It could be bad. I don't know. I, uh, part of me likes that idea because it makes it, you know, if you need to change something to go through the, the requirements to go through to change a state regulation could take, well, decades, really. It could seriously take decades. So I don't like that idea, but um, I also don't like the idea of anyone just be able to change a handbook and all of a sudden it's law. But the nice thing is with this, it does say you have to actually get, you have to have like, you know, public meetings and put the information out there before you make any changes that so that uh, the water board can't just go and say, hey, we're just going to change this now because we don't like it or it doesn't work that well or something. They have to go through a process that involves the public. So that's uh, that's good. And it, it'll make it easier to, you know, to make any changes that you may want to uh, make in a cross-country control program. So uh, first of all, you know, must submit a written cross-country control plan to the state water board. So they're requiring every water agency in the state uh, to submit a plan, a cross condition control plan to the state. Okay, and I think we'll talk about that a little bit later as to when that's required and whatnot. Um, you have to conduct surveys or hazard assessments. Okay, so that's a requirement that is, that is there now. You have to actually do a survey. Uh, I think Title 17 said something like that, that it was a... Uh, uh, yeah, you had to do a survey, but they're calling this a hazard assessment. I think this means more of a, no, I think it give you some options of not necessarily being a physical survey. Uh, there has to be the provision of backflow protection. So if you come across something, you need to require a backflow preventer. Provision of at least one cross connection control coordinator. There's a lot of changes in this area. We'll talk about that when we get to that. Um, that's That has been a requirement all along. There has to be someone uh, does Title 17 say someone trained in cross connection control to carry out the program? So that's what they say now, but uh, um, with the new regulations, you have to have the provision of one, at least one cross connection control coordinator. And we'll talk about that when we get to that. Uh, for testing, USC procedures are equivalent for field testing, and you have to maintain the records for three years. So those are some of the overall uh, generalities of the new requirement. So yeah, Assembly Bill 1761 basically is the bill that was passed that gave authority to the state water boards to create this handbook and gave uh, you know the authority of law to the handbook. So once that is published, then that basically becomes law. And that'll be, um, again, easier to change, uh, which can be good. So what happens is once it is actually adopted, then 90 days later, Title 17 will be repealed. And so that will no longer be the law of the land, and it will be the uh, the new California cross Condition Control Policy Handbook. Uh, so again, public water systems must implement a cross Condition control program. Um, and again, before adopting substantive changes to the handbook, the state water board will consult with state and local officials. Okay, so again, they can't just make changes, it's got to go out there and people have to comment on it and stuff. So there's there's other, some sort of protections there. So each um, public water service must have local rules which will allow the public water service to perform corrective action, at least one of the following. So what the state is doing is saying, hey, you locally, you have to have rules in place that allow you to either discontinue water service or deny it if it's a first time application, um, or install, inspect, test, maintain a backflow preventer at the user's premises, 
or in some other way address the issue. Um, so basically they're saying that, that the state is saying locally, you have to have some way of dealing with cross connection control other than telling someone, hey, you should put a backflow vendor and they say no and you say, oh, well, never mind. Um, you have the authority, you, you need to set it up so that you get the authority to shut off the water if necessary. So that may be a local uh, code or ordinance or something. Um, or it doesn't have to be that, you have to have some way of dealing with it. So I know some areas say, okay, you put in a backflow vendor, get it tested, send us the results, or we will do it and bill you for it. Or maybe some water agencies just, just deal with it themselves and don't bill the customer for it. Their, their water is just more expensive as they deal with it that way. Um, but you have to have some sort of a way, some sort of local code or ordinance that, that gives you the authority to shut off the water if someone doesn't comply or to put in a backflow vent or if someone doesn't comply or, or something. That's some other manner. Um, I don't know what that could be, but um, some way of ensuring the customers do comply. So backflow pre preventers must pass a laboratory and field evaluation according to the 10th edition of the manual or uh, ASSC standards um, or a, test a testing process equivalent to either of the above, okay? So again, right now, uh, it's pretty much USC because ASC hasn't done any testing of their own, uh, their, their products for a field certification. Um, but again, that in the state regulation, it says that you can use something equivalent. So if so, someone else comes along and they have a lab and field evaluation, the state's happy with them, they can bump that in there and say, okay, you can use this. 